And we are live, I do believe. We are? I think so. Very good. So, Randy and Laurie again. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> For yet another Senior Saint moment here on a beautiful Saturday morning. Yes. And I have to say I'm a little excited. Uh, we're going to leave here shortly to go to the Brazos River. Yay. Which... Uh, I grew up on, uh, mm -hmm. so I can hear the fish calling. Definitely. And the grandkids. And the grandkids. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll leave here in a little bit and uh, head toward Waco. Yes. Yeah. So, hope everybody is doing well today. Uh, I don't know if wh wh whoever is listening and wherever you are, we had great rain last night. Yes. We needed it. Our well, yard says, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and so we don't have to put any of that store-bought water out on, the, out on the yard. So True. So, yeah, thank you, God, for the rain. Yes. Good morning, Treva. Good morning, Miss Treva. How are you today? <laughs> so today we're going to talk about uh, getting lost in the messiness. And uh, that we're talking about the messiness of life, for which, if you haven't heard, can you know, life can be messy. Absolutely. Yeah, it can. Yeah. So before we get going, let's uh, invite the Father into our conversation. Okay. Let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we come to you today. We're so grateful for the rain you provided. We pray that all who would see this video would, uh, that you would speak to them in some unique and special way. And we invite the Holy Spirit into our conversation this morning so that you might reveal the truths that we need to, to understand and the truths that uh, we can handle. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Mom. How are you? And Miss <laughs> Barbara. It's good to see y'all joining us today. So again, we're talking about getting lost in the messiness of life. And there's a, a very familiar verse that uh, you hear it, people pull it out of the air sometimes uh, to try to explain things or situations or circumstances. But uh, maybe we can look at it a little differently today. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, would you read Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14a? I will. Thank you. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for a good, for a good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Yeah, that's a good word. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So what we're what, with this the, this passage, we're, this is a powerful promise uh, of finding God if we seek Him, and it's also you know it's a kind of a talks about a personal priority. When when does God become get on top of our to do list? Hmm. Uh, and this also talks about a passionate pursuit uh, you know do do we seek God with all of our heart or part of it or, or do we coast a little while and then dial him back up when you've got time when you have time mm -hmm. or when you're in need yes so uh, let's talk about getting lost in the messiness and again this is from Missy e. Buchanan's prayer book, Aging Faithfully. It's a great little book. And today, he hear these words. Looking back on life can be bittersweet. Along with heartwarming memories of family and friends, there are experiences that you would rather forget. Is that true? I forgot them. No, <laughs> no just kidding. Uh, definitely. Yeah. Can, yes. Yeah. Me, me too. For sure. 
time, there are times when life mowed you down and spit you out <laughs> as mm -hmm. a shredded mess. Mm -hmm. I'm certain some can resonate with that. Sometimes your mind, though, insists on wandering back through life's crooked paths. Just maybe you're randomly daydreaming, minding your own business, and suddenly you find yourself back into these uh, times that you'd rather forget. Mm -hmm. Thinking what you could have done differently. What you could have done different, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how you wish that you could undo those hurtful moments. But even if you could, what about the good that may have come out of those bad times? We, we don't think like that sometimes. What about the mm -hmm. insights that we gain from painful experience? You know, I would challenge us all to th think about what we can learn even in these difficult times. What is it God is trying to teach you? What is it the Holy Spirit's trying to reveal and what truth? So one thing is clear, life is messy. Mm -hmm. I'd agree to that. It hasn't always turned out the way you had planned. Heartaches and disappointments were real. Maybe you've had difficult family members, financial worries, uh, health issues, career regrets. You, you just the list can go on and on. Mm -hmm. But there have been many good times and treasured memories. So I like to think about those as well. Yes. <laughs> so you have to come to appreciate life's ups and downs because these are all part of our own individual, unique experiences in our adventure that we call life and no one else has the experience of your journey that's true i mean we are all unique and through it all mm -hmm. god has never left us not once not even when we felt like he had not even when you thought god was nowhere around mm -hmm. so you never have to wait until your life is tidy and neat before you come to God. God is all, God already knows your mess and the messiness of your life and he loves us still. Mm -hmm. In fact, God delights in using imperfect people just like you mm -hmm. and me. You're a great example of that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, should give everybody hope. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so God delights in using <laughs> imperfect people, just like us, to do good in the world. Right. Uh, and for some of us, chronologically gifted, even now, or especially now, mm -hmm. uh, in, in our later stages of life. And so some might think that it's time to coast. Maybe if we're in our fourth quarter of life, which is <laughs> not the case. Fourth yeah. Second half. Or second and a half, <laughs> wherever you are. Right. <laughs> so to live is to know both the joys and sorrows of life. So go ahead, pour out your messiness before God who adores you just as you are. You should be thankful for that. Amen. I am. I, I am. You can trust God to perfect the sojourner who continues on this spiritual pilgrimage that is life. Mm. So think about some of the messes in your past. Yeah, I'm, I'm Do saying. I have to? <laughs> I'm saying go down that crooked road. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, think about. Focusing on the blessings and what you learned during those times. Mm -hmm. And how God brought you out of those messes in life. And, and what do you think about this? Some people say life happens while you wait for all the puzzle pieces to fall exactly in place and to be perfect before you do something. Right. You, would you yeah. agree? To, have you heard of anybody doing that? Well, it just it makes me think of mom and dad. Of course, I know I talk about them a lot, but um, I know that they love to travel, and they always wanted to take this special train trip 
and talked about doing it, you know, all their lives pretty much. And one day they were going to do it. And then mom got ill and, and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. So it kind of harkens back to what I said last week that to go while you can. Go while you can, yep. Yeah, don't wait for that perfect time. Very true. Yeah, and it uh, reminds me of a guy I talked to, a good friend of mine, he was a lawyer. And I asked him when he planned to retire and give this up. Mm -hmm. And he he had this plan after two years, he was he was also going to do a train trip, him mm -hmm. and his wife in the Canadian Rockies. And he showed me on his phone, all, you know, what where it would go and all those things. And he was very excited about it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Within two weeks of our conversation, he was gone. He had passed away. And so he was waiting until everything was perfect before he mm. did this and did that. And unfortunately, Sorry. he didn't get to do that. And his wife didn't get to do that. And uh, so life is messy. Mm -hmm. And as we wait on things to be perfect during that interim time, life happens. Mm. So, any final words before we close in prayer? So, life is messy. Life is messy. Just keep going. Keep going. Look for God in the mess. Yes. Uh, for what he's teaching you and how he can pull you out of it. Mm -hmm. Because he can and will. Yes. And you, each of our unique experiences now become witness to what God can do and will do in imperfect lives mm -hmm. uh, as we try and help others negotiate the mess, messiness of life. Yes. So let's go to the Father in prayer and we're, we thankful, thank all those that have joined us today and hope uh, you may have learned something. So, so let's uh, go to the Father. Loving God, we confess that we have not been able to comprehend what you're doing in our lives right now. Sometimes when we look back, we see that your hand has guided us through the messiness of life. We thank you for holding us close and for believing in us still and giving us purpose even now, leading us on. So we thank you for loving us just as we are. We pray all this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And I do think you're perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. In every way. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> I'm glad there's a record of that. <laughs> so y'all have a great day. It's so good to see you again. And uh, we'll see you perhaps either online or maybe in person at Acton Methodist. Mm -hmm. uh, Nine o'clock tomorrow or uh, actonmethodist.com slash live for uh, online at 9 or 1030. Mm -hmm. So go with God and be fruitful, friends. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.